of us that staying home helps us to flatten the curve of the coronavirus. If we go out, that it's only for food, for health reasons, or for essential work. When we do so, that we stay six feet apart from other people. And as soon as we get home, to wash our hands as soon as we're able to. All of us can help prevent the spread of coronavirus. Dear sisters and brothers, on this most sacred night, in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and to pray. If we keep the memorial in this way, listening to the word and celebrating his mysteries, then we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumphant triumph over death and living with him in God. Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, all time belongs to him and all ages. To him be glory and power through every age. Amen. By his holy cross, and glorious wounds. May Christ the Lord guard us and protect us Amen. May the light of Christ rising in glory dispel the darkness of our hearts and our minds. Exalt, let them exalt the hosts of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud a mighty King's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad, as glory floods her. A place with light from her eternal King. Let all corners of earth, the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice! Let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. It is truly right and just, with ardent love of mind and heart, and with devoted service of our voice to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ our Lord, his Son, his only begotten. Who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, why clean the record of our ancient sinfulness? These then are the feasts of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, who 
whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night when once you led our forebears, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt, and made them pass dry shawl through the Red Sea. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian beliefs apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. and bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. Oh, 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 wonder of your humble care for us. Oh, love, oh, charity beyond all telling to ransom a slave you gave So great, so glorious a Redeemer. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to mourners. Oh, Truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth, and divine to the human. On this your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering, the work of bees and of your servants' hands. An evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray you that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance, and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star. Your son, who coming back from death's domain, has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people and in these days, the last days, has sent his son as our redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption.
book of Genesis. When God created the heavens and the earth, the world was empty and cold, and the Spirit of God moved through the darkness, touching the face of the and God said, let there be light, oh, let there be light, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. And God said, let there be light, and there was light, what was light, shining bright, shining bright, shining bright. And then God saw that it was good, saw the light was very good, and there was evening and morning on that first day. And let the barren earth break forth in trees and plants and flowers, and let the grasses grow upon the plains, from the fruit trees in the valleys to the pines upon the hills. Let them grow, let them grow, let them grow. And then God saw that it was good, plants and trees were very good, and there was evening and morning on that third day. And let there be light in the dome of the heavens to mark the seasons, the days and the years, the sun for the day and the moon and stars for night. And then I saw that it was good, saw the lights were very good, and there was evening. And morning on that fourth day. And God said, Let the waters swarm with flying creatures, great and small, and let the heavens filled with flying birds. And there were wells and creatures in the deep, and birds in the sky. Swing free, flying high on that day. And then I saw that it was good. The shepherds were very good. And there was evening and morning on that fifth day. And I saw to let the earth bring forth all creatures great and small, cattle and creeping things, all beast, wild and tame. And God found them. Stay. 
And so the heavens and the earth in all their splendor were finished. And God rested on the seventh day. God blessed the seventh day as a day of rest and celebration. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning except that at the end of the ages Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward, and you lift up your staff, and with hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two. The Israelites may pass it on dry land, but I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them. Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. Sing the song of freedom, sing the song of freedom, 
God has won the victory. God has won the victory. Horse and chariot are cast into the sea. Horse and chariot are cast into the sea. The angel of God, who had been leading Israel's camp, now moved and went around behind them. The column of cloud also, leaving the front, took up its place behind them. It came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel, but the cloud now became dark, and thus the night passed without the rival camps coming any closer together all night long. Sing the song of freedom. Sing the song of freedom. God has won the victory. God has won the victory. Horse and chariot are cast into the sea. Horse and chariot are cast into the sea. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night, and so turned it into dry land. When the water was divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of sea on dry land with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Sing the song of freedom. Sing, Sing the, the song, song of freedom. God has won the victory. God has won the victory. Horse and chariot are cast into the sea. The Egyptians followed in pursuit. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them, right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of fiery cloud upon the Egyptian force, a glance that threw it into a panic. He so clogged the chariot wheels that they could hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel, because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Sing the song of freedom. Sing the song of freedom. God has won the victory. God has won the victory. Horse and chariot are cast into the sea. Horse and chariot are cast into the sea. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head on towards the sea when the Lord hurled them into its midst. Sing the song of freedom. Sing the song of freedom. God has won the victory. God has won the victory. Horse and chariot are cast into the sea. Horse and chariot are cast into the sea. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped. But the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. Sing the song of freedom. Sing the song of freedom. God has won the victory. God has won the victory. Horse and chariot are cast into the sea. Horse and chariot are cast into the sea. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore and beheld the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, 
They feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang the song to the Lord. Sing the song of freedom. Sing the song of freedom. God has won the victory. God has won the victory. Horse and chariot are cast into the sea. Horse and chariot are cast into the sea. Sing the song of freedom. Sing the song of freedom. God has won the victory. God has won the victory. Horse and chariot are cast into the sea. Horse and chariot are cast into the sea. Horse and chariot. Horse and chariot. Fear and loneliness. Fear and loneliness. Death and emptiness. Death and emptiness. Horse and chariot are cast into the sea. Horse and chariot are cast into the sea. Horse and chariot. Horse and chariot. Hate and prejudice. Hate and prejudice. Chains and slavery. Chains and slavery. Horse and chariot are cast into the sea. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, All you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come, without paying and without cost, drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me, and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen, that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. As I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of nations, so shall you summon a nation you knew not, and nations that knew you not shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek the Lord where he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his ways and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God, who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as the heavens rain down snow come down, and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows, and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. You will draw water joyfully. You will draw water joyfully from the wells of salvation. From the wells of salvation. God alone 
as my savior, I trust, I shall not fear. Yes, God is my light, and God is my song, and now is become. Draw water joyfully. You will draw water joyfully from the wells of salvation. From the wells of salvation. Give thanks to the Lord, praise to His name, make His mighty deeds known to the peoples. Declare the glory of His name. Declare the glory of His name. You will draw water joyfully from the wells of salvation. From the wells of salvation. Sing, sing, sing a song to the Lord, for he has done glorious deeds. Make them known to all the earth, for people of Zion sing. And shout for joy, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Joyfully, you will draw water joyfully from the wells of salvation. From the wells of salvation. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel lived in their land, they defiled it by their conduct and deeds. Therefore, I poured out my fury upon them because of the blood that they poured out on the ground and because they defiled it with idols. I scattered them among the nations dispersing them over foreign lands. According to their conduct and deeds, I judged them. But when they came among the nations, wherever they came, they served to profane my holy name, because it was said of them, these are the people of the Lord, yet they had to flee their land. So I have relented because of my holy name, which the house of Israel profaned among the nations where they came. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, not for your sakes do I act, house of Israel, but for the sake of my holy name, which you profaned among the nations to which you came. I will prove the holiness of my great name, profaned among the nations, in whose mists you have profaned it. Thus the nation shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when in their sight I prove my holiness through you. For I will take away from among the nations, gather you from all the foreign lands, and bring you back to your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you to cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols I will cleanse you. I will give you a new heart and place a new spirit within you, taking from you your stony hearts and giving you natural hearts. I will put my spirit within you and make you live by my statutes, careful to observe my decrees. 
You shall live in the land I gave your fathers. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. The word of the Lord.
will sing thy praises of the glorious Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption, so that renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided service to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you not aware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in the newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him, through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might be no longer in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ raised from the dead dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, approached, rolled back the stone, and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were shaken with their fears of him, and became like dead men. Then the angel of the Lord said to the woman in reply, Do not be afraid. I know that you are seeking Jesus the crucified. He is not here. For he has been raised just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has been raised from the dead. And, as, and he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Then they went away quickly from the tomb, fearful yet overjoyed, and ran to announce this to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them on their way and greeted them. They approached, 
embraced his feet and did him homage. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go tell my brothers in Galilee, and there they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. We heard at the very beginning, dear brothers and sisters, that amazing, of the Easter Vigil, that amazing and one of the most ancient and important hymns in the church's tradition, the exalted. Simply, it means, literally, rejoice. In the early church, a deacon would have known the exalted by heart. The honor of singing it was handed down from one generation to the next. There are several images in that exalted that I think might help us to recognize and name the reason for rejoicing, the reason for our joy. We have freedom from slavery, an end to fear, the triumph of life over death, and God's utter fidelity to his son, Jesus Christ. The exalted sings that God has not done this because any of us may have earned or deserved it, but simply because our God loves us so much. This is the holiest of nights because it seals the family covenant between God and with us. You and I are co-heirs with Jesus, sons and daughters of God, is it any wonder then that the heaven and earth are called to explode with joy on this night? As Christians, you see, Easter joy is meant to mark our lives. Yes, Easter joy. And Christian joy is about facing up to the most difficult and the most tragic moments of our lives, knowing that we don't have to be afraid as Jesus, as the angel tells the woman in tonight's gospel, that we do not need to be afraid because God's faithful love will actually see life win over death. Now, you and I may know that that is easier said than done. Take the gospel, for example. The women are told not once, but twice to tell the disciples to go to Galilee, where they will meet Jesus for themselves. Now, to be truthful, I've always wondered about Galilee, what a desolate trip that might have been for those disciples, believing somehow the amazing, if not amazing, but extraordinary story of Mary Magdalene and her companions. We're told that those disciples set out in fear of their lives, but also with the hope of seeing Jesus raised from the dead. There were no, as we know, any assurances or reassurances from anyone's previous experience. There were no guidebooks to say what to look for at the end. Not even the promise of Jesus himself. Just an instruction. Go quickly and tell the disciples. He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. Of course, we're told in the gospel very clearly that Jesus meets them on the way. So, dear friends, Galilee, I think, does not have to be a place for you and for me. Maybe it's more like a situation, a frame of mind, or a choice that we make. Our particular Galilee could be that very desolate journey of physical, emotional, or spiritual pain. It could be some dashed promises, maybe even broken relationships or unrealized hopes. Whatever it is, 
I believe this night, this Easter Vigil night, promises us that Christ is not only there when we arrive, but importantly, that he has gone before us, ahead of us, so that desolate place, so that we might have loving arms in which to fall at journey's end. The reason then, even in this pandemic crisis, you and I as Christians and as disciples of Jesus are to be so exultant is that the first Jerusalem did not have the last word of Jesus' life. No, our God did. So all of our deaths in Jerusalem and all over and all our fearful and anxious trips to Galilee, I end, believe, can end very clearly in new life and in fresh starts. And as we deal with this pandemic, we pray for that fresh start. With the whole church, we can make, we can make Mary Magdalene's invitation to the disciples our own. This Easter, let each of us go to Galilee, wherever and whatever it may be for us, let us do so and find that the Lord is there, that you and I, you and I can explode with joy that yes, our God in Jesus Christ has, as he promised, risen from the dead. I invite you to stand now, dear friends, as we come before our God, that through the Paschal mystery we have been buried with Christ in baptism, so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism, by which we once renounced Satan and all his works, and promise to serve God in his holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you all, here and at home, do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? Do. do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do. do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do, do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. I do. Almighty, may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Amen. Let us now, brothers and sisters, intercede for all the world through the intercessor and redeemer, Jesus Christ, who for our sake suffered death, was buried, and rose again. For our church and parish family, that we may become a community of the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For nations and peoples of the world, that the peace of the risen Christ may reign forever. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all those who will soon be baptized and receive their sacraments, that they may die to sin and rise to the new life of the risen Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all who serve the poor, the homeless, and the dying, that God will bless their work with joy. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For scientists, doctors, nurses, and healthcare workers, that they may be blessed in their ministry, kept safe from all harm, and soon fi find a cure for COVID-19. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For the prayers we offer in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For Maureen Newman, all those who lost their lives due to the coronavirus, and all our deceased brothers and sisters, that they may rise to the new life of the victorious Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. 
Father of life, author of love, in raising your Son from the grave, all of creation has been reborn. May the life and love of the Paschal mystery that we celebrate tonight be a constant and lasting reality in our lives. And we make this and all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, our gifts are now ready. Let us pray that the offering of our own lives, together with the sacrifice of Christ, on this the vigil of Easter, will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Amen. Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us the healing of eternity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, on this night above all to laud you yet more gloriously. 
when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, for he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising he has restored our life. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with all the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing. He gave you thanks, and he gave the bread to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and gave you thanks. And he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of his resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Look with favor on your church's offering, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love we may be counted now until the day of eternity. Among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion, bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis our Pope and Oscar our Bishop, his brother Bishop Patrick, with all the bishops, the clergy, the religious, and the entire people you've made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of all our brothers and sisters, inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and to freedom 
to peace and to justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead as faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your presence and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us that when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Joseph, her faithful spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, St. Clare, St. Simon, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we might be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my own peace I give you, a peace the world cannot give. So please, Lord, do not look at our sins. Look rather at our faith, at the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this Paschal Sacrament one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. I would like to take this opportunity, dear friends, to thank so many people who have been able to help us with this liturgy, this distance liturgy does not work for me. Clearly, I want you to know that. But it could not happen without an extraordinary amount of work, particularly by those who joined us by um, working through providing the music from their homes, isolated, working with the technology, amazing technology that we have these days. So to Mami and to um, all those who participated Thank you, thank you, thank you. Also to our liturgy board and to Tim, you have been a marvel as our audiovisual te technician. Those who have transformed the environment and of course those who have proclaimed the word of God for us throughout these holy days. And of course to my brother priests who are, um, have been amazing in this time of seclusion. To all of you, on behalf of Father Chris, Father Took, Father Michael, the entire pastoral staff, and indeed the faculty and um, administration of our parish school, I wish you all a very blessed Easter while you are at home, separated at this time, but united as one in the celebration of Christ's resurrection. So let us pray as we ask for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten Son endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ, alleluia, alleluia.